Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hey, everybody. So we're going to get to our episode in just a second, but I wanted to make sure that you heard about my latest offering because people have been asking, how can I work with Jolie? And I would love to work with you, but you all have such individual relationships. So I would love to see you pop into my next free live training. It's the best way. Yeah. My it's eyes, right, directly, your relationship. These are small intimate groups. We're just going to meet in Zoom and we're going to talk about what it is that you want and how you can get it. Go to my website, joliehamilton.com. Click on the work with Jolie tab. You'll see some live trainings and master classes coming up. Grab a spot at the next one and we'll see you in there. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Today, we're going to talk about um, the many, many marriages. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the many marriages theory of being married, um, we were presented this idea from our our analyst, our union yeah, analyst, Thayer this Green. For... Um, this is just an idea. He, I'm sure Thayer isn't the only person who ever even talked to us about it. But the way he put it was, you're not going to be married once. You're going to be married lots of times. If... Uh, things go in a certain direction, it might be to the same person over and over again, but you can expect that you are going to experience some very distinct changes and, and phases to your relationship that if you look back, you can see, oh, oh, we experienced a really profound closure and, re and new beginning. We experience yeah. a change. And sometimes those things are thrust upon us. Sometimes we create them. But this idea of having many marriages um, and we're using the word marriage here oh, yeah. in the most poetic sense mm -hmm. possible, like in the David White poetry of the, the three marriages, like the, the marriage of your soul to another person, the marriage of your soul to your work, yeah. <laughs> your All soul the to different itself. Kinds of like, things. The, yeah, just the, so the, the committedness of our relationship, we made, we made a commitment to each other. I have made commitments to other people. Heck, I have commitments to my children. And these I know the dogs are, think we're committed to them. Oh, the dogs. I definitely made commitments to the dogs. Some of them I regret right now. <laughs> having cleaned up the it office. Was, it, was a lot of, it was a lot of morning. Uh, okay. So what is it about the this multiple marriages model that that you like? What do you like about it? What How's I it love you? about it is that it allows me to be in a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. Oh, yeah. So okay. the idea of marriage, and that's why I stick with the word marriage. Marriage often is a solidifying event, or it seems like it's supposed to be. Like, so you you grow up, you're a child, you grow up, you enter adulthood, you meet people, you at some point decide to be with a person. Our country doesn't allow us to legally marry more than one person, but a person or persons who you are your committed people and marriage it's itself, especially a marriage between two people um, that takes place with a, a certain um, state sanctionedness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There is a, there's a sort of imaginative lock around that. Yeah. Here, we're married now. We're married. The regulatory oversight says we do this now. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. said that in my, <laughs> I think my solar plexus just turned yeah. inside out. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> okay. Um, but in fact, I, I didn't realize what I had signed on the dotted line for the first time I got married. So I got engaged when I was 17, um, to pretty much the first boy who liked me, um, didn't even consider, I didn't even think about anything else. Cause like he asked, I said, yes, cause sure. I wanted I wanted mm -hmm. the things you, you're supposed to want. And then I got married at 20. And it wasn't until I was getting divorced that I realized what 
that marriage license had meant. It, it Divorce is illuminating that way. Right. Yeah. And so what it illuminated for me, aside from the legal troubles, like let's just put a pin in that for a second. It shone a light on the fact that there was a, there was an unspoken agreement, not just between my husband and I, but me and my, my cultural setting. You are married, cisgender woman, like they're like, you're, you are, you're white, you're, you're like, we're raised Christian. Like there was all this stuff, all these labels that have been pinned on me, get in this bucket with all of your labels and stay there. And the marriage yeah. really somehow solidified that. Up until the marriage, there was still um, some exploratory, I don't know what's, I don't know why, but marriage can be this big um, anchor. And that anchor can feel really good. So I, in fact, I use the phrase anchor, yeah, anchor partner, partner right. to describe you um, frequently, more, more so than I use the word husband, because you are my anchor partner. You leave me um, you, you allow me to tether to you when, when I, when I want to feel that solidity, which is really awesome. And I love that feeling, but, oh, the foreclosure of imagination yeah. that happened when I got married the first time left me unable to traverse the transitions that needed to happen over the years. So I was with that person for 17 years, um, married for 13 and, I didn't know that we had no capacity to transition, to really transition between states of being. Mm -hmm. And what it meant was when we got divorced, um, he was really pissed about stuff that he thought was a done deal, right. like one and done. Like we made a promise and that's that. There's this rigidity to the to the, the the form and structure of the marriage right and so yeah. at some point my imagination sort of exploded like a like a hand grenade went off in my imagination and i no longer felt the confines of that and i was like let's renegotiate the whole thing my my go-to move was not let's get divorced i actually was first Ooh, um i want something different I, w I want something new. I want something different. What we're doing isn't working for me. I'm not getting what I need. And so let's renegotiate the whole deal. So it sounds like you did have an opening of your imagination out of the original rigid model into a transition model. Yeah, I did. And it was, for me, kind of it, was it was shocking. It was, it was a, that. it was an all at once. Like, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Okay. It appeared like a lightning strike. Boom. Um, I had thought of myself as the kind of person who was going to be married once and I married somebody who would put up with my shit. And, um, that's what I had been told to look for. Look for somebody who'll put up with your shit and then just stick with it. And it doesn't matter whether you're miserable. In fact, that's kind of what you're supposed to be. Yeah. Be miserable that's, together. That, that, I, that I, is borne out by lots and lots. That's of, what uh, I witnessed. It's what I witnessed all over my family, not just my parents, all over the place. Cultural messages, yeah. And, and friends of the family. And yeah, there was a lot of, put up with each other. Yeah. And so there was a lightning strike to my psyche. Um, it happened to come in, in the form of, um, you know, really the first time I'd ever danced in a bar. Just, I was just like in a reverie in a state of Dionysic mm. reverie of love and erotic energy and uh, yeah, whatever insanity. And all of a sudden I just wanted something different and it's impossible for me to know whether that something different that I wanted, um, whether it bears any resemblance to what I actually wound up negotiating for, what I got, what I have now. I think in that moment, it was the lightning strike that, well, that was very destructive <laughs> and you don't know what's going to yeah. happen afterwards. I did not know how I was going to grow and change, but the lightning strike meant that I was irrevocably changed and I needed to grow in a different way. Now, my partner did not experience that lightning strike, except as it came to him through me. And so he was jarred and he didn't have any language for renegotiating either. It just didn't work. So we entered a, a phase of deeply problematic relating, to put it lightly. Yeah. I could tell that story fully, but I'm going to 
for the purposes of this podcast, I will leave it at deeply problematic. And then we'll, when we, when you and I got married, we... Which I never thought we would do. No, there was quite a long we time. We did of, sign on the line. Which I think, and, and now that I, now that you mentioned that, we were talking about, yep, yeah, when marriage, no, bad. Um, but, but that imagination you had of, of being able to transition and morph and change the shape of our marriage, I think that helped us get there. Yeah. Because so, then when we got married, we said, okay, so we're getting married three years from today. We're going to look at this all again and decide we're gonna whether we're, we're going to get remarried not. or not. Um, and so, so every three years, we have a built-in clause to say, or clause it's a, agreement, it's an whatever you want to call it. It's an off ramp. Yep. The reason we did that, yeah, it was because, so when we decided to get married, it was, it was with a great big, a lot of side eye at ourselves. Right. It was a lot of like, are you serious? Yep. You just, what? And there was still a, a, a large gap between who I was and who I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I was aware of that. I mean, there was probably a large gap between who I perceived you to be and who I hoped you would be. And, you know, I loved you for the man that you were, but I also had a vision of the man you might become. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not like, mm, yeah, that's not that's, really for me to have. That's, it's, it's, oh, it's complicated. Tricky. Well, it's, you want to grow old with someone and yet, you don't know who that person's going to be. That's right. And that's the trick of it. But that is so. That's where this model helps me imagine. Yeah. Like, wait. So the 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 multiple marriages model, the idea that you're going to experience these phase changes, these distinct parts of your relationship. A common one it, to think about is um, you have the the dating slash engagement portion. Then you'll cross this threshold where there's a, a big commitment. Maybe it's marriage. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you buy a house together. Um, maybe you have a child together. Maybe you move across the country together. Mm -hmm. some, some um, something happens. Change. There's a there's a line. There's a threshold that's crossed. And now you're in this new state. And what is typically skipped is the that during that change, that threshold that's crossed, there's actually a, the threshold. I used to imagine this completely wrong. The threshold isn't just a line. It's a hallway. Oh, I see. It's a liminal yeah. space. And I use the metaphor, the image of a, a long hallway that you're in. And well, or any length, it's a hallway. And there are many doors off of this hallway. And sometimes the hallway is pitch black. And sometimes it's very bright. And you can see your options and the doors are labeled. But you're in this liminal space, this in between this threshold, and stuff's changing. And that's when to have the vulnerable, brave, courageous, and absolutely crucial conversations with your partner and with whoever else is in your your brain trust and your in your your love trust. Who like who do you talk to? Who it's who do you want to be? You're in the reinvention yeah. and reimagination period, and that might last for it could last anywhere from a few hours to months where you're in this transition time. And there are uh, countless transitions. There are some big ones mm -hmm. that, that come up with, um, I mean, if you, if you have children, a job changes, there are if you yeah, move, career changes. the things you were just mentioning, yeah. you know, those, those are big changes, big transitions. in and Spiritual changes. Yep. I mean, I had a, um, I had a huge change happen because I had a spiritual shift that occurred, yeah. which is actually how we wound up getting engaged. That's right. There was a, I had yeah. a, I went on a trip. I went on an experience. I, I came home, almost asked you to marry me. Didn't. We suffered through another couple months. Yep. Yeah. Miserable before I finally was able to say what I needed to say. Yeah. But that was a spiritual transition, not like nothing in our outer world was changing. Everything was actually pretty nailed down at the moment. Yeah. So, um, and those, so what's, what have we done? What, what have we, what transitions have we? Well, lots of them. Yeah. One of them was the transition from being um, friends to being mm -hmm. more than friends. And a thing that we did poorly 
while I understand that a lot of people have a deep distaste for labels, when the two of us, so we'd grown up knowing each other and I wouldn't even, even have said we were friends. Mm, we grew yeah, up sort no, of in, not... in separate generations almost. Yeah. I, like it's only 10 years, off, but off offset. Um, and so I knew you, but I didn't know who you were really. I just yeah, like knew your yeah, name and I was, like, you... knew like how you were playful yeah. in, in social settings. But I didn't know the you things well. you could see from a distance. Then we transitioned into friendship. And then there was a day when it was more than what people typically call friendship yeah and i wanted to know what that meant who what what are we doing who are we then and you hated yep. labels no. and eschewed them like that was the worst thing i could have asked you um and it was heartbreaking because the two of us couldn't get on the same page about that you just didn't want there to be labels and i i wanted to respect that but yeah, I don't respect it. Meant, it. <laughs> well, it in meant that we were in a transition that felt like it was endless. Yeah. Because we didn't ever enter a phase where where we were like, okay, so we're dating or we're doing this or we're or even just saying what we're not doing. Right. Um, so that was a really hard transition time. A much easier transition was the one <laughs> in getting out of being in business together. Oh yeah, we got mm -hmm. married, and and um, a month later, you were diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and I applied to grad school, and um, we closed our business. Yeah, and all like it was all just within like thirty day days of each other. It was an insane time, but the the pressure of it, the intensity of it, meant that we did name the things. We said what was yep. happening. We talked about how hard it was to come to terms with these things. And we decided to dissolve our business partnership. Yeah. Um, dissolve the corporation that we owned together. And it, and in fact, like having that physical thing, like there were there was paperwork to do. Yeah. There was stuff, there was stuff to close out. There were there were there was a ritual ending. That's what I was gonna say, a kind of a ritual yeah. of of the closure. And that that meant that um that transition had had a real um it had a weight to it that let us become the next thing yeah not that that meant that it was super simple next but we had this very clear line where now we had transitioned out of one phase into another and we renegotiated a bunch of things in our relationship and one of them was that in we like nope we're not working together anymore and that was in 2000 13 the end of 2013 beginning of 14 and here we are seven years later working together again yeah i needed a long break from that and, baby <laughs> and to be clear the the interim part oh. of that transition was the absolute firm commitment that you were not going to work with me yeah um, it was a 100 percent no yeah and so the the rebirth of working together has been very there's it's been marked by one really specific thing you can work for me, but I don't yes. want to work. Yeah. I don't want to try to own a single thing, like one thing with you and create it in a shared yeah. vision. Yeah. Um, I want there to be a hierarchical um, corporate structure. Yeah. It took a lot to get to that. It took seven years of mulling and, yeah. and figuring out and growing and changing to get there. Um, meanwhile, we're married, we have children, we have, you know, the disasters that happen with children and the the lines of our life that like they're all there's all these are not lines like the shapes of our life all overlap our work life and our and our sex life and our our parenting life and our avocations and our our hobbies and our they all overlap and it's not like we're experiencing these transitions all lined up at the same time oh yeah so it's not no. like i could look at my life and say oh here are the transition points nope. it's not like that it's they're all these different parts of me and I'm experiencing different transitions. Yeah. When I think about the transitions that, that, uh, that we've had, that I've experienced in our relationship, yeah, it's, it's hard to think about them like linearly. 
at all. I can't like just think about time because there's so many different aspects to our relationship and different parts of it transition at different times. Right. Sometimes at the same time. Mm. So the thing that I think has served me best is remembering that the multiple marriages model is describing a, a very, what I find to be a very healthy reality. It won't always be the same. Right. That's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. That, that our, that the negotiation point. So we, when we renegotiate how we're married, that that's its strength. Yeah. The, the agreements that we keep and the day to day being in relationship, the strength of it rests primarily on how we are able to be resilient and flexible, not on yeah. how we are able to adhere to a set oh, of rules. Oh yeah. Yep. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's life how is... we how we hold up against the things that happened that we didn't imagine for one thing in the context of the the agreements that we have. Yeah, so this is the paradox. Yeah. We create um agreements and and even rules and um or heuristics, rules of thumb. Yeah. <laughs> Basic I, we we create these agreements together so that we have some way to discuss how we need to be flexible and changeable and like what needs to shift by naming the way things are and the way we hope for them to go we have a we have a point of reference to work from but it's really important that each of us not um get too um sucked into the idea that the agreement or the or the the um the label that we've pinned on something is definitive Yes, right. Um, or that it is more important than the person standing in front of me. Yeah. So uh, you say that, and I realize that my aversion to labels when we first got together was, um, it was an example of black and white thinking. Mm. Because if something was labeled, I would just, that was it. That was the whole thing. Like it explained it. And it was done oh. versus so like something... your early scientific training yes. like so, so right. just cut co- like ma- def- that was definitive uh-huh. then. if right. it had been labeled it was definitive yeah because okay. it you know, then would... had a definition attached to it yep. and the definition was supposed to be stable so that you could make inferences right and yeah yeah sure mm-hmm. that makes sense except Except it's not how the world works and scientists who scientists. are that rigid are not good <laughs> scientists. So I'm not a scientist anymore. Well, you um, you have come to to realize that your childlike assumptions about how yeah. how labels and taxonomy and all it just doesn't it's just not it doesn't work. Doesn't work. And so I would say actually you're a far better scientist now oh, than you uh, yeah. were. You're a far Getting better inquisitor. Yep. Um you're a far better participant in in the in the the naming process and the and negotiation process because you will use labels. You'll define your terms. I love defining terms. You do, but you'll do it in an iterative fashion. That yes, there's the thing. We're always in an iterative fashion. So I like to picture the spiral, and you just and I like the outward spiral. That's me. If you like an inward spiral, go ahead. That's totally fine. I like to imagine myself as an undifferentiated hole at the center, not a hole, H-O-L-E, hole, W-O, <laughs> W-H-O-L-E, hole, I, an undifferentiated, you know, neonatal unity. hole, unity. Spiraling outward is my, is my path through life. And I'm going to come back to the same issues, the same labels, the same. But a little different every time. A little different, a little mm-hmm. changed, a little more me, hopefully. And so- and so that's the um, the acknowledgement and recognition of transitions as they happen helps with that. Yeah. So ritual transitions yeah. help, and we've we've done a couple of episodes on rituals. If you are experiencing any transition of any kind, I strongly recommend that you c- go listen to a ritual section or read chapter twelve um, of Project Relationship and just think about a simple the the absolute simplest most accessible ritual that you can put in place to help you actively embody the transition that you're experiencing. The transition is going to happen whether you do that or not, but ritual helps you do it in a way that is deeply human. Yeah. That that psyche can recognize, that you can recognize. Which makes it easier to stay conscious 
Yeah. Yes. And ritual can also help us feel seen by our community. Right. So this is a thing. So that, then you can get some support. Yeah. We've struggled a lot with this. We like the multiple marriages model and we like acknowledging that stuff changes and we don't always have the same agreement. Yeah. Our community has not always liked that. That's right. They, um, they're more of the rigid model. I have been surrounded by people at multiple times in my life who are like, um, nope, if you're changing the rules in your relationship, we're done with you. Yeah. Um, I, and I wish I could well, put it more would, gently, but no, holy crap, that's, that's literally that's what has happened. And, and we see that happen with divorce where people just yeah. like, they just bail because it's too hard to acknowledge the fact that nothing stays the same, yeah. but relationships are messy. Being alive is messy. And that is the good news. When I think about any one of the people who I cared about who is dead, I don't wish for their life to be simpler. I wish for them to be here experiencing the mess with me. You know what they've mm -hmm. got? They've got the simplest thing possible. Yeah. They're dead. Yep. Great. Everything stays the same I really wish now. my brother were here experiencing the mess of having his three beautiful children. And I get, come on. Right. Join me here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm yep. on my soapbox now. I know. I feel so strongly about this. It's okay to be in the mess of it. Well, and I want to say too, something about, so yeah, it is, it is okay. It's, it's a way of deepening our relationship, my relationship with the world in general. Yeah. Um, and and it doesn't always go well. Yeah. I mean, transition. There are transitions of like any size you can imagine. Um, people die, jobs change, um, and then, for example, one that I have historically been really bad at is when you go on vacation. Oh my god. The transition. <laughs> between you working and not working just throws me for a loop. I know it's coming. I know it's going to happen. I do what I like. I, I, I have little rituals. Maybe I need bigger rituals, but I try to bring it into my consciousness. I do everything I can and still end up acting like a little twerp the, for the large portion of every one of your vacations. It's a and thing. So, um, it's, it's a place where, in case anyone's thinking this this marriage is perfect. No. No, nah, it's not. But the fact that you can talk about that and own th that that's a thing means that, so I was just well, on a vacation. there's hope for it to get better. Right. There's a hope for it to get better. And I prep myself for it without, this is tricky. I had to learn how to acknowledge that that was the likelihood while also expecting better better yeah <laughs> and therein lies the the trick of all of being alive i think yeah. you can accept fully what is you can ex i i ex okay so i'll use myself as an example i accept myself fully as i am and i want to do better mm -hmm. a being able being capable of holding the tension of those two seemingly oppositional statements that's where the third thing is born. That's Jung's transcendent function. That's the whole notion of polarity. Like, yep, the polarity isn't about a fixed state of just two things. It's about the energy running between them and what can be created. So holding that tension and saying, wow, yeah, he's probably going to be a pain in the ass right now. And wow, he might be, he might do something that just blows me away and is so new and different yep <laughs> and just That's... and just be with that yeah. uncomfortable not knowing i'm not great at not knowing but you know. um i continue to increase my tolerance for ambiguity and something that has come up in my work over and over and over again is when we can tolerate ambiguity we actually have the capacity to make bigger wins so there, there's a psychological theory for this. So like tolerance of ambiguity allows you to not make the safest choice. So uh, if you, oh, if you imagine yeah. that you were, um, if you had to choose between a green ball and a red ball, and there's a bucket of a hundred balls and you know, one bucket has 50, 50, you need a, and you need a red ball. The other bucket, you don't know what the split is. You don't know how many green, how many red, which bucket do you bet on? What's the, it seems like at face value, it there? feels like, well, okay. So I know it's 50, 50. So I've got a 50, 50 chance out of the, the bucket that's split 50, 50, 
But the other bucket, what if it's 9,900? Oh, so this is um, an absolute uh, representation of your desire to know instead of not knowing. Exactly. I know that's 50-50, so I go with right. that one. So if I want to know, so I go with that. Yeah. And that, this is a place where I can choose, I can choose a mediocre result. Yeah. Or I can choose to move toward uncertainty. Yeah. And in that uncertainty might be the thing I most deeply long for. I, it's This is not easy stuff to actually practice, but yeah. it is life-changing and it's 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 maturity yes it's I, it's allowing it yourself not like not about age but it's about the maturity yeah. of 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 learning how to be in the discomfort of of not knowing and looking at these transitions i feel like it keeps me grounded in what's actually happening yeah so we can be in the marriage we're in and know that it won't last yeah Okay. Well, maybe we'll be in a next one by the next time we're talking. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. Who could say? But um, until then. Keep talking to each other. Hey, everybody. So we've talked quite a bit about how to do relationships, but I know a lot of you would really like to get my eyes on your relationships specifically. It's so worth it. And yeah, that's a bit of a hard thing for me to do for everyone individually, unless you're actually working in my coaching program. But good news, I'm doing some free live trainings. Yay! Yay. Live that's, trainings. that's awesome. I mean, I get it all the time. I'm with you all the time. It's I get true. lots of training and and You were just in one so... big free live training. And oh wait, I'm... you pay for it. Okay, maybe I pay for a little, but you don't have to. <laughs> okay, so I would love to to have y'all click on over to my website, JolieHamilton.com. And if you click on the tab that says Work with Jolie, you're going to see my latest offering for a live training. These are 60-minute masterclasses in how we can relate better. I'm going to be covering topics like creative monogamy, like how to transition into consensual non-monogamy, if that's your thing. And I'm also going to be talking about something that is really in my wheelhouse and something that we don't talk about on this show as often as we might, which is how to have a completely kick-ass relationship that really empowers you to be your full CEO mm -hmm. power player self. Right. So in my other world, I do a lot of business coaching. So bring it on. Bring it on. And you've all here heard us talking about our relationship and you have heard how she has addressed all of our issues in our relationship and how we talk about it. And she will turn that attention on you. And it is amazing what you can learn. Well, thanks. And yeah, just jump on over. Love to see you in there. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>